Okay, good evening. This is Dale M. Garden Web University. This is our Mel 601 Town Hall for Mel 601 Town Hall for Task Stream. Um, I'll kick off tonight by welcoming all of you. I hope that everyone has survived Florence. Uh, prayers for you and for yours. If you have folks or yourself are still affected. Um, by the storm, please remember and know that we will work with you on catching up your work. Uh, we have put deadlines back a week and we can adjust from there. So don't give up. We'll, we're certainly all here to help you. You have your coach and your instructor. Um, some of you belong to Dr. Stedman and I, and then the others to Dr. Todd and Dr. Tillman. Um, Dr. Todd's with us tonight, and I know Dr. Stedman is as well. We may have other faculty with us. I'm on the town hall version of Zoom, so I can't tell who's with us tonight. Uh, I have Dr. Stone here with me, but we're all here for you. So just let us know if there's anything that we can do to help in any way. Um, as you will see on the screen, <clears throat> I have the contact person when I send this video out later tonight after it's processed and uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I will include this information with the video link. If you're having problems setting up your task stream account, please contact Seth Opry. He is the Gardner Webb task stream manager. He's the manager of all accounts. Uh, you can contact us, but we'll just forward it on to Seth because he's the only person who has uh, <coughs> the um, access to set up or help you with an account. As you can see on the screen, I have his Gardner Webb email address and he also his phone. Uh, Seth is aware that you will call or email him, so he won't be angry or surprised. I have cleared that with him. So, uh, again, <clears throat> uh, if you have issues getting into Task Stream, uh, please contact Seth. All right. Uh, I'll save that document and go back here. All right, I'm gonna start out with task stream tonight. I'm gonna to start out from the very beginning with the login. Um, when you www.taskstream.com and you'll come to the task stream by watermark welcome. You'll use uh, your, your email uh, sign in to, and your password to sign in to task stream. Um, and then you will have your DRF, your direct uh, response folio. You'll either be fall 18, which is for regular master's degree students, or fall 18 add-on for add-on licensure students. I'll start out with the fall 18 DRF. It is slightly different than the other. It'll, it'll end up the same way, but the pacing is different for the five semester program versus the three semester program. So as you can see, this is your direct response folio. Please remember that TaskStream is a repository for work that has been completed in Blackboard. This is not a place for comments or to work on your work. This is only completed finalized work. For example, we're all working on the app cell right now. Um, you will not put the app cell in until you have completed all five tasks and it has been approved by your instructor and our coach for task stream submission. When that occurs, <clears throat> you will come to the task stream box and click on it, and you will select attachments, uh, and you will upload from your computer, add files, Find your completed app cell. Make sure that you get the right version and not a draft version. We get that a lot. Um, and then that's when they get sent back from the evaluators. You upload that document, upload and close, save and return. Now, this is the part where we always kind of fall off the bridge. Make sure that you then submit your work. It's got a little flashing 
reminder here, you're not done until you submit work. All right, and it'll give you a statement that says your work has been submitted. And so that's how you go about submitting your app cell. And later on, for those of you who are in the add-on licensure program this semester, you will add your app cell the same way. And once it is in there, within 48 hours, hopefully within 24, our independent evaluators, state graders, will grade your work. Now, if your work is not at proficient level, they will send it back for revision. And they will contact your coach, and your coach will work with you. They'll tell you why it's not, not where it needs to be. Now, 99% of the time when it's returned back for revision, the reason it's turned back for revision is you uploaded the wrong version. We don't get a lot sent back <clears throat> if you have followed the rubric, if you have done your peer reviews, if you have, if you have revised your, your drafts, usually we don't have a problem. Um, one out of 100 will get sent back for some reason, but your coach is there to help you with that resubmission. They won't just give you a failing grade and let you go on. If it's below proficiency, it will be sent back to you for revision. So that's what goes into task stream. Please remember this is a repository for state grading. Now, your other two, <clears throat> your other two responsibilities this semester are your competency analysis and your school of ed dispositions. Competency analysis will be done at the end of the semester once you have written all of the competencies in either in both task five of the app cell and task four of the app cell if you're at on licensure you will write your competencies you'll write 12 for the app cell and then nine for the app cell you will write those competencies now when you click on this button at the end of the semester this there is nothing for you to do other than go into the form and you will check whether you have done that or not. Now, the evidence of that, again, will be in your papers as well. Um, you do not have to write anything. There is nothing for you to write. You've already written them there in your paper. This is a checklist where you verify to the state that I have written those, and we won't let your papers go in without you having written those, but you must certify to the state that you have done a competency analysis. Once you click all of those met button, buttons, you will save and return. And again, you will have to submit your work and it will give you a message that you have submitted your work. So that's how you do competency analysis. You do not complete your competency analysis until the end of the semester when you have written all of the competencies that are required this semester. Again, if you have, if you're a regular 601 student in the five semester master's program, when you complete the app cell and you have done task five and uploaded for evaluation, you go in and do competency analysis when you upload for evaluation. If you're a, a 601 add-on student who's required to do both the app cell and the app tell this semester, when you upload your app tell that says that you have completed task four, which is competency analysis, you will go in and complete yours at that time. So that will be later this semester. Now, your first task right away to make sure that your task stream account is registered and working is you will go in at this time and do your school of ed dispositions. Complete this form. This is a self disposition in terms of where you are at the beginning of this program. Um, it's okay if you need improvement. Uh, it's okay if you meet expectation. It's okay if you think you exceed expectation. Now, there is a box there. <clears throat> if you click on exceeds expectations, um, I would expect an explanation of why you believe you're past expectations at this point. If you click on needs improvement, you can drop us a sentence on what you think you need to improve on. If you click on meets, we don't expect you to write anything in the box. 
But again, if you click on needs improvement, you need to tell us what you think you need improvement on to inform us so that we can help you with that. If you exceed expectations, we'd like to know why. Uh, so you rate yourself in terms of learner development, learning differences, learning environments, content knowledge, application of content, assessment, planning for instruction, instructional strategies, professional learning and ethical practice, leadership and collaboration. Those are the areas that you're going to self-assess. Again, if you need improvements, tell us why and what we could do to help. If you meet, you don't have to write us anything. And if you exceed, you need to tell us why you think you exceed. Again, save and return. Again, submit your work. So those are the requirements for you this semester in task stream in your DRF portfolio. So you have the app cell for the regular add-on license for the regular master students you have the app cell competency analysis to be done once you complete your app cell and school of ed dispositions next semester you will do the app tell then you will do the oma in 603 and half of the skip you'll complete the skip and upload it in 604 do all the cap and then the psyop will be due in <coughs> in 605 Again, you can see that certain semesters you have dispositions, certain semesters you have competency analysis and dispositions. And then you will have a final competency folio that I will talk about next. Um, and then you will have your internship log. Everyone knows that, that each semester you are to log 80 hours of clinical activities from your suggested activities list. Do not upload those here until your last semester when you have all of your logs completed. That would be five logs if you're in the master's program and three logs if you're in the add-on licensure program. You upload them here for their final evaluation. You can upload them along the way in your competency folio for comments from your coach to make sure you're on track. I'm going to show you in just a minute how to upload your, and create and upload a competency folio. I also have a video on how to do it, a shorter one that's not embedded in this longer video. Um, you will find it under your video library in your 601 class shell, and I'll show you that when I get there. All right, so let's quickly look at if you are in the add-on licensure program. I'll go back and show you that one. If you're in the add-on licensure program, the only thing that's different again is your pacing. You'll do the app sale and the app tell this semester, the OMA and skip next semester, cap and sop in your final semester. Other than that, it's the same as the regular five semester program. We just combine these evidence artifacts so that you can finish in three semesters rather than five you will have three semesters of 80 hours of clinical experiences that you will upload eventually into the internship log. Do not upload and submit them at this time. You will request comments on them each semester in your competency folio. So that covers your DRF portfolio. You do not work in here. Um, this is not a formative tool. This goes straight to the state for state assessment. This is for your licensure in North Carolina. For those of you in South Carolina, you will submit this. You'll get licensed in North Carolina. At that time, you will reply, apply for a reciprocal license. Uh, Seth Opry also is the licensure person. He'll help you with that um, because Cash Stream is for licensure, so he does licensure as well. He will help you at that point to apply for your reciprocal license. In South Carolina, you will take the Praxis, and once you pass that, you will be licensed in both North and South Carolina. So that concludes the DRF portfolio. Now, as I said to you earlier, if you will go to your 601 Blackboard shell, and hopefully my Blackboard will open. When you click on your 601 class section, if you will go to video library, over here in the menu, you will see a short very short video on how to set up your, your competency folio in task stream. That's what I'm gonna cover at this time, but if you need to go back and refer to this, there is a, a, a short video, I think maybe th three minutes long, 
on how to go through the process that I'm going to go through now. So we already have that one there for you. I made it myself, and so I know that it's, uh, it's what I'm going to cover with you right now. So in addition to your DRF portfolio and task stream that is submitted for your state licensure, you also have to do a competency folio, uh, not to be confused with competency analysis. You have to do a competency folio, and there's two reasons why we have you do a competency folio. Um, the, most, <clears throat> the most relevant for you is, is you will have a portfolio of the work that you completed as a clinical intern to show prospective employers. Because we have separated it out into a separate folio, you can publish and share it, which allows you to print it out, but also you can share it virtually. You can send it to a prospective employer to show them examples of the work that you did. Now, the items that you put in your competency folio are just that. They're items or artifacts. They're proof of the work that you did as a clinical intern. They are not documents or, or, or written narratives. They're things that are generated by the work that you did. Uh, please remember we're working on evidence artifacts. Evidence being the written narratives that you're working on now. Artifacts are things that are done or byproducts of the work that you do as a clinical intern. They would be like agendas or minutes or pictures of meetings. They would be things. They're icons, they're artifacts. That's why we call them artifacts. They're things. They're not some written explanation of what you did. You did that in competency analysis. This is the proof, the thing that was generated. <clears throat> and the second reason why we had you do it in a separate form is for our creditors. Our creditors want proof that you did what you said that you did so that you can have an accredited degree from a degree granting institution um, that would be accepted at other universities and accepted for your licensure. We have to maintain our accreditation. And part of that is we must show them proof of what you've done. So that's why we create a separate competency folio. It's not for written narratives. It's for things that are generated by the work that you do. There are two documents that you've been given that tell you <clears throat> where you will find those artifacts from the work you do and with your evidence narratives and also from your clinical experiences. Those two documents have already been shared with you. They're also in your 601 shell um, where you will find competency proof or competency artifacts. All right, so let's get started <clears throat> on, on creating our competency folio. Uh, let me go back to the main screen here. Now you won't have as many DRFs, I have a lot on my screen. Um, you won't have as many DRFs as I do, um, but you will click, you will come, when you open up your main screen, don't go into your DRF, simply click on folios and web pages. And you get started right here at the top where it says create new. And so I'm gonna create a new folio and this is what you're gonna do. Uh, And you type in the title, whether you want Dell's um, competency folio or whatever you'd like to name your competency folio. Remember, you might want to share this in a professional setting, so you might want to make sure that it's a, uh, that's your professional title on this thing. And you click on Create New, uh, and then it's going to ask you to select a template. You're going to select a custom template designed by your learning community. Uh, and then it's going to give you a drop down menu and you're going to select competencies for 21st century leaders. And then you're going to click on continue. I see I have a question. There's one folio for the entire program. I'll show you that in just one second. When we open it up, I'll show you how you use it each semester. Okay. You're going to have one folio, just one. All right. When you get here, um, you're going to pick a style, um, a theme. I think I'll pick the butterfly this time. Um, and so my title goes here and this is the, the cover that I'm gonna have and I'm gonna click apply. And I'm gonna preview.
And this is what it's gonna look like. Now, it is not done. <clears throat> I have a lot of students who email me that, you know, that, that it's not working. No, it's not going to work because it's not done yet. So what you're gonna need to do then at this point is you're gonna need to click on folios and web pages again. And now you're going to find You're going to find in there's going to be a box. This one, you can see how many I've created over the years. It's going to be here now. And now, when you click on it, guess what? It's now going to be in a folio format where you can upload your artifacts into each of the 21 competencies here down through visionary. You do not have to upload anything for digital learning competencies, I have integrated them in the first 21. And this is where you would click and upload your internship log each semester and request comments from your clinical coach. That's where you request comments on your log. This is one folio for the entire time that you're in the program, whether it's five semesters or three semesters, you will use this folio because let me explain why. I'll click on communication first and it tells you, you've got to put three, <coughs> Three in here, three artifacts in here. App cell, one should come from the work that you did while you were doing the app cell. One should come from the work that you did while you were doing the SOP. And one is open-ended from the 80 hours of clinical experiences. So three of them. One of them needs to be a digital learning competency as well. And, it's, and it is spelled out for you here. I've got another question here. I don't see the option for the custom template you mentioned. I only see three options. No. Again, I'm going to start again. One more time coming through this. Create new. Create new custom templates. Got to click on custom templates. And then you can get to competencies for 21st century learners. I believe that's your problem. Make sure, don't do general purpose, do custom templates. Then continue, pick it. I'm gonna pick the pencils this time, apply, preview, close, open again and it should be there. If you do not have, if you do not have custom templates and do not have that option, again, you are to email who? Seth, if you, if you, have, if, if you have followed my directions and you don't have what you need, you need to contact Seth. That means it, it's not been loaded in your, it's not been loaded for your um, competency folio. These are the kinds of issues or problems that I was mentioning. All right, so once you are in, once you are in once you are in again, you will use this the entire time you're in the program. So you're to do three, three rounds on each one of these. Now, if you're in the five semester program, you only do 12 this semester. If you're in the add-on licensure, you do all 21 this semester. And so it paces you out. Um, you do them along with your competency analysis in your classes when you do your evidence artifact work but you must have three rounds in here when you get through for each of the 21 of these competencies. Now, here's, a, here's the part where it gets tricky. You have to know what kind of media you're uploading and select the proper button. Um, if, again, if you don't have the choices that I have, you'll need to get in touch with Seth. All right, back to where we are. This is an important part. Make sure that you understand. Um, you must pick the proper button 
to upload the type of media that you have. And so let me go over that with you. Pay careful attention to this. If you have a PDF or if you have a PNG or if you have a JPEG, PDF is a document, a PNG is a screenshot, a JPEG is a picture, that's a text or image. You click on this button to upload those. If you have a Prizi or a PowerPoint, you click on Slideshow. If you have a Word document or an Excel document to upload, you click on Attachment. Try not to upload videos, MP4s. They take a long time and, and sometimes aren't successful. You're better up uploading links. Um, if you've got an MP4, upload it to YouTube and then upload the link here. And so those are your options going across here. Text and image, that's pictures, PDFs, and screenshots, slideshow, uh, PowerPoints and prizzies, other uh, multimedia uh, materials, attachments, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets. Try not to upload MP4s, upload the links here. All right, let me catch a question here. iPod audio recorded meeting says M4A, uh, same as an MP, as MP4, no, that's just an audio. MP, uh, MP4 is a audio video. It's a recording, um, but again, um, you should be able to upload it um, as an audio file. You're probably going to have to use <coughs> you're probably going to have to use YouTube and upload the link to that as well. question comes along, can you upload a Google Doc or a shed? Uh, no. Um, this is a shell. Um, programs won't open inside of this. Um, now, I've had students upload links to Google Docs. Some of them have been, some have been successful, some have not. Um, and so, um, I would not suggest uploading Google Doc links. Uh, it's very hit and miss if it'll work. Um, the actual document itself, I mean, you've got the document or it wouldn't be in Google Docs, upload those. That's, that's a far better uh, practice than trying to upload links. Uh, once you put these in and you will do, again, you'll do 12. If you're in the regular program, you'll do all 21. If you're in the add-on program this semester, Please remember, you don't have to do the digital, there's nothing to upload here. I've left that here so that you'll know what the digital competencies are. I have put each of these, I have integrated these into the other 21 for you to upload them. Again, I want things here. I don't want written narratives, I want things. I want items that have been created as a result of the work that you did. Uh, Eleanor says, turn Google Docs into a PDF. That's exactly right turned into a document. That's exactly right. So you take your Google Doc, you turn it into a document, you use text and image and upload it. That's what I was referring to. Much, much easier, much better, much more sure that it's gonna be there when somebody goes to, to look at it. Um, so that is how you create and upload to your competency folio. Um, now you can do one of two things. You can do several at a time and click request comments and choose the ones that you want where you've got something in them, or you can do it one at a time. If you don't upload several at one time, just wait and click three or four or five at a time, or if you're gonna put them all in at one setting, that's fine. Uh, and then select the person who is your coach. You should know who that person is. Um, and then when that's done, it will send a comment request to that person and they will get an email. There, mine just came. I sent it to myself. Um, you just heard my email chime. And let's see if it worked. Look at that. 
This is what you'll get. Your coach will get this. There's an automatic note that Dale M has requested comments from you. Uh, and they'll know to go in and, and look at your competency folio and, and make sure that that's an appropriate artifact, or they'll go in and look at your internship log and make sure that your activities are appropriate. So <clears throat> remember, in the DRL portfolio, that's for state licensure, there is no comments. This we're building for a different purpose. This is for you to have a record of what you've done, and this is for you, uh, for us to be able to show our creditors that you have done the work that you said you did. So this is the competency folio. Now, I see that I'm running short on time here. I'm gonna go back uh, and quickly review your DRF portfolio. Please remember, that you only submit work here for evaluation. Competency analysis is done at the end of the semester. You can do your school of ed dispositions as soon as you get in. We'd like to get those as soon as possible. So your competency folio, you will not bring, we will, we will show you how to upload it here for evaluation in your last at the end of your last semester. It does not come over here until then. We will upload it here. Um, and we will submit it along with, with your licensure portfolio. We have to show it to the state as well. And your internship log, you will, not, you will not upload here until the final semester when you have all three or all five according to which program you're in. Now, last thing. This, this DRF portfolio has multiple pages, kind of like when you click multiple pages in an Excel spreadsheet. You always work off your work page. This is where you upload your work. Will always be on your work page tab. This is the last thing I'm gonna to cover tonight. <clears throat> there are other tabs here. Uh, the comments tab, we've taken all the comments out of here. So you won't get comments here. Um, the other thing that you would be interested on in clicking on is once you've submitted work, you can come back here to scores results and it will show you what your score is. When it's scored, it will be under scores results. You will be notified when your work has been done. Um, and it, again, you upload it from your work page. And when you want to find out what score you got, you come to your scores results page. Please don't be that person that emails me and says, I can't upload my work. Well, that's because you're not on the work page. Um, so make sure that you always work off your work page and when you have questions about your scores results, they will be here. Um, and so this is where you will come to get your final scores. So that's test stream. Um, again, under video library, I have a short video on how to create and upload your, your competency folio. If yours doesn't have the options that I showed you tonight, it's not you and it's not me. We'll get in touch, get in touch with Seth and he'll go in and make sure that your account uh, has those items in it. Uh, there's nothing for you to set up here in your DRF portfolio. It's complete if it doesn't look like this one. If you're add-on, if it doesn't look like the other one, if you're regular, you need to let Seth know if some of these things are missing. As I said, you can do your School of Ed dispositions now. Uh, and you will wait until you complete all your evidence artifacts, either the APCEL or the APCEL and APTEL, and you will complete your competency analysis at that time. I hope that this brings some clarity to you. If you've not been able to get into TaskStream yet, you need to get in touch with Seth. If, you're, if you don't have the options that I had when I went in and set up a competency folio tonight, you need to get in touch with Seth and he'll work those problems out. He's expecting your calls and emails, and so don't hesitate to do that. Uh, task stream is very important. All right, let me check my question and answer. I think we've got everything done there. All right, so we're good to go. Uh, I will post this video. Let me see how many people joined us tonight. 60, that's good. Uh, I will post this video uh, later tonight once I uh, process and upload it, and I'll also make sure I include Seth's uh, number and email. Uh, I hope everything's going well for you. Remember, we'll work with you if you're behind because of the storm. 
Um, we appreciate your business at Garden Web. Uh, we hope that you will stay with us and, and that, uh, that this program uh, fulfills the needs that you have. Um, we want it to be a quality program, but that depends uh, on how hard we work and how hard you work. And so if we, we're kind of in this together. So uh, I'm excited about our journey. Um, please let me know if you have issues or problems or questions. Uh, I've got one more before I go. I think that's a good one. I'll read that. Thank you, Matt. Matt's one of ours. Uh, thank you. Have a good night. I'll see you next time.